Hi everybody, my name is Leo Spizzeri, co-founder of the North American Pizza and Culinary Academy located in Chicago, Illinois. And on behalf of Sun Mix USA, I'd like to welcome you to this demonstration of this beautiful mixer. You guys have all seen this mixer, we call it the Shelby. I had this designed after a 65 uh, Shelby Cobra and uh, Sun Mix did a beautiful job to match the picture that I gave them. And today I wanna show you why this machine is so special. This particular mixer is part of the Queen Line mixer, and this is the 60, which refers to 60 kilos of dough that it's able to make inside of this machine. This machine features a digital display readout, and this is very state-of-the-art, very technical, but it's just so simple to operate once you actually understand what we need to do inside of this mixer. There's a couple features specifically that I'm gonna talk about. First off, we can run this machine in manual mode. So you can set first speed or second speed based on your desired revolutions per minute. When we talk about revolutions per minute, in general, most of the spiral mixing world, we deal with revolutions per minute ranging anywhere from 80 revolutions maybe to about 125 in that range. Every brand of mixer is a little bit different. The thing that I love about this is that SunMix gave you the opportunity to um, customize this to your own liking. So if you want uh, first speed to be a little slower, a little bit faster, we know that in general we have that range. And then when we get into second speed, second speed generally runs between 200 and 210, 220 in that range. The great thing about this mixer is that you're able to go even faster now. So this mixer features two separate motors. The motor on top inside here controls the corkscrew, which is gonna spin around. And then you have a separate motor for the bowl itself. The thing that's great about this, with two separate motors, they found a way to reduce friction on the machine so we don't incorporate a lot of extra heat inside of this. They also went one other step further. This machine also has the capability for you to set the desired final dough temperature. So in our case, we generally teach our students here at the academy that a dough should range somewhere between 20 to 25 degrees uh, Celsius for a final dough temperature. I've got my machine today set up at 25 degrees Celsius. So when the machine achieves that temperature, it will stop automatically due to a laser. There's a laser underneath here that shoots down into the bowl and the machine is sensing constantly the temperature of the dough and it's included in this readout right here. The other feature that I love about this is that this machine has a light. You don't know how much you want a machine with a light inside until you actually have one. And this is one of the things that since we've gotten this machine, everybody that works on this machine with us says that same thing, turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. And this is a beautiful feature that comes with this. So our manual mode has an M here on the display panel. Right now I'm set up, this is showing 80 revolutions per minute and uh, I've got the play button or the green start button. I've got the red stop button. And then the blue here, I've got a reverse feature for the bull. And then the red, I'm sorry, the green is the forward feature of the bowl. This particular machine has a separate operation in the fact that this bowl rotates different than all the other bowls. We're rotating our bowl uh, clockwise. The way that this machine works, I'm gonna start it up over here. I'm sorry, we're running counterclockwise on this machine when it's going forward and you'll be able to see the, uh, the arrow just went by or we can run this machine backwards. So when we reverse the bowl backwards, this is gonna be uh, cleaning up the bottom of the bowl. So if you have a lot of flour on the bottom of the bowl, we can run it for a second or two on reverse speed, so it'll pick up that flour. But we've also tested this at the academy, and we found that when we create uh, different starters, especially Bega, this is another really great feature to have when working in reverse. Right now, my machine is set at 80 revolutions per minute. It's very simple that when I start the machine, as I'm mixing, this panel will allow me to increase the speed. Uh, if I bring it up to 200, as soon as I press start, the machine automatically kicks in, the gear engages, very quiet, very little noise, and that's one of the things that I love about this. The other feature that I really love about this is 
Those of you out there who have, um, let's say a pizzeria or a chain of pizzerias, you have the ability to set different recipes inside of your machine. This particular machine has 12 different recipes that you can store inside. I've got one set up for Pizza Classica, which we use here at the school. The great thing about this is that if I press this button, we'll be able to see all of the steps. I'm gonna show you the uh, steps over here really quick. I'm gonna put my password in here. This is password protected. So as an owner of this machine, if you have operators that are gonna be making those, they can't mess with any of these numbers or any of these settings. They will simply press the Pizza Classica button. Mine is set up that for the first two minutes, I'm gonna be running on 80 revolutions per minute and the machine readout will physically say, this is the part that I wanna incorporate my water and my flour. At this point, it's gonna give me two minutes of time run, running at 80 revolutions per minute and then the machine is gonna stop. It's gonna stop so that I can go ahead, it'll give me a signal that it'll say on the display, at yeast. I'll put the yeast inside the machine. I'm gonna press the play button or the start button and it'll go into the next phase, which is increase to 100 revolutions per minute. And then I'll be able to mix for six minutes. At that point, the machine is gonna stop and it's gonna tell me to add the oil. I'll be able to put my oil in here. Once the oil's in, I close the guard and then I'm gonna press start again, and then it's gonna go into 200 revolutions per minute. So this is the part of the mixing process where we're starting to emulsify the fats, right? We're starting to work really fast so that we create this creamy texture on top of the gluten net. This is gonna do this automatically. So I've got two minutes on 200 revolutions per minute, and then it's gonna stop again. It's gonna tell me to go ahead and add the salt, I'm gonna press start again, and then at that point, it's gonna complete the mixing and it'll be perfectly done. So now, now that this is all done, I'm gonna go back to the recipe over here. I'm gonna press Pizza Classica. I'm gonna press load, load. This is showing me it just shut off. So now the recipe is loaded. So when I go back here to automatic mode, I'm gonna turn the light back on, and this is giving me right here, it says Pizza Classica, and this is telling me now that it's ready for me to add my water and flour in. So let's go ahead and make this dough. It's gonna be so simple, okay? I'm gonna open this up. At this point, I've got my water already uh, portion. We're gonna do, um, in the Italian method, I'm gonna show you a five liter batch of dough in the Pizza Classica method, okay? So this is five liters of water, and then for every liter of water, I'm putting in 1,700 grams of flour. So this is eight and a half kilos of flour. I'm gonna pour this all inside. Now this is a little bit different in the process that we would normally use when we teach here at the academy, but when we do a restaurant startup or a pizzeria that we're trying to streamline the operation, we're gonna be doing this as simplified as possible, and that's what I'm gonna to demonstrate today. So my flour and water are inside over here, and then all I have to do is simply press start because we've programmed all the time and all the speed in the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press start, and automatically the machine is gonna do what it's gonna do. So right now, the first two minutes, the way that I have this set up is that the machine is spinning, okay? We're mixing flour and water together and we're creating the gluten net itself. So as this is beginning to mix, little by little, the water is incorporating into the flour and then as that water incorporates into the flour, you're gonna to start to notice that that gluten net is gonna be built and this dough is gonna to start to look a little shaggy, drying up. All of that water now is being absorbed into the flour, which will get us ready for our second step, which is gonna be the point where we're gonna stop and add the yeast. The reason why I like to use that step in this process is because now gluten has already started to develop. It's not fully developed, but it's already started to come together. Now I'm gonna be using instant dry yeast in here, and as that yeast incorporates in here, it's actually folding itself into the gluten net. This is about a six, almost 60% hydration, right about 59, right about there. So this is neither a really low hydrated dough or a high hydrated dough, but we would say this is a nice middle of the road dough. And to see how easy this is gonna to come together and the security that you're gonna have when your employees, or if you're a brand new operator and you purchase this machine, how easy it is to make this dough, it's gonna be the same every single time. 
which is what we're looking for. Most of the most of the, the operations that I consult, and we do startups and all kinds of different work with pizzerias, that's always the number one thing that we end up talking about, is how do I make my pizzas the same every single time? So now we're at 15 seconds left, the dough is almost coming together. I can see that almost all of my flour is incorporated in, but it's still a little bit of flour exposed. So we're at the perfect spot for this dough. Also, I'm checking here, my dough is only 18 degrees Celsius. So it's still really nice and cold. The machine stopped on its own, and right now the readout is telling me to add the yeast. So I've got my yeast portioned out over here. We're adding five grams of yeast for every liter of water. I'm gonna put my yeast in just like this. I'm gonna close the gate. Again, this is so that you don't get your fingers caught inside the machine, or so that nobody sticks their hand inside the machine. Maybe they don't know any better. I'm gonna press start. And again, now what I've done is I've increased to 100 revolutions per minute. So it started automatically at 80 revolutions, and now the machine is working at 100 revolutions. It's working a little bit faster because the original gluten now has been developed, or it's starting to come together. We increased a little bit faster so that now this is getting into the actual work, the kneading process of the dough. As this is kneading now, that yeast is getting kneaded into the dough, and we've got plenty of water in there to hydrate. This is instant dry yeast that we're doing. And this process now is gonna be set for six minutes. For six minutes, your operator doesn't have to do anything else with the machine. This is the perfect time for you or your employee to go maybe wash some dishes, go, uh, go take something to the dish area, maybe to clean the, the area that they're working in, maybe get their dough boxes ready to go, get their scale ready. The dough process is gonna do everything for you, which at the end of the day is eliminating labor or lowering labor. So we're talking about the return on your investment on this machine. The machine is doing the work for you so that your operator can go do something else. You're making money in this process, right? I'm gonna be quiet for a second so you can hear how quiet this machine is. This little bit of slapping noise that you hear inside is not slapping the dough against the side of the machine. This is physically the hook folding against the bar that's in the middle here. This bar is a really great feature because all of the spiral mixers that I've worked with in the past have all featured this same bar, but this bar is usually turned sideways so you can see it horizontally in front of you and it's usually very small or very thin. And while this machine would be doing the work with that very thin bar, you could physically see this bar moving and kind of butting against each other. It's not doing very much to support the dough. The bar that's inside of this mixer is very heavy stainless steel and it's polished. It's also sitting very close to the bottom of the bowl. Very little gap in between it. Same thing with the corkscrew. Very little gap between the corkscrew and the bowl. So even though we're working with a five liter batch of dough right now, I've done tests here at the academy with as little as one liter of dough inside over here. And this is one of those things that when we talk about a mixer this size, it's unheard of because there's usually so much space in between that that bowl would just be spinning and the ingredients would slide underneath and they'd never be needed. So this is really a testament to what SunMix has done and what you're getting when you purchase a machine like this. So this bar being a little bit wider, what it's doing is now the hole that's in the middle as the dough starts to knead, right? We're in this process in Italian, we call it a corda or cordare, right? Which is the part when your dough starts to knead and it physically starts pulling in. This is the point where you'll notice that the dough starts coming in towards the bar. Because that bar has a little bit more space in it, we're allowing more air to get into the middle, which is doing two things. Number one, it's making that air go into and fold inside of the gluten net, so you're gonna get more of an airy, open texture from the mixing process all the way through kneading. 
But the other thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna create a dough that's gonna be much cooler because we're letting the air naturally flow into this dough without any resistance at all. I'm looking at my dough temperature here and we've still only hit 19 degrees. I'm at 19.3 degrees Celsius. So again, it's working very gentle. The machine is doing exactly what it needs to be doing and it's kneading very simply. All automatically, I haven't done anything but just talk to you guys out there. I've got another minute and a half going right now and I can see that inside of the bowl of the mixer, the bottom of the bowl now is beautiful and clean. There's not a lot of stuff incorporated or not a lot of stuff that's unmixed. So the bottom of this mixer is super clean. The sides of the bowl are really clean. And these are all some signs that the mix, the mixer itself, is mixing very efficiently. It's not doing a lot of extra movements for nothing. So every time that, that corkscrew turns, it's doing something. It's part of this process. So again, you're gonna get a better mixed dough because the machine was made so well. I'm almost done here. I've got less than a minute to go. When we go ahead and we get to the next phase of mixing, this is the part of the dough where we're either gonna add oil or salt. In my dough, Pizza Classica, I like to do the oil first with the salt at the end. We're gonna add all of the oil in and we're gonna increase the speed automatically to 200 revolutions per minute. So this is gonna go a little bit faster now. What's gonna happen is we're increasing the speed and this is where we're gonna begin that process of emulsification. It's just like uh, imagine making salad dressing where you have vinegar and then you slowly whisk in uh, the olive oil and that vinaigrette becomes nice and creamy. That creaminess of the oil that we're gonna add is gonna coat the gluten strands and ultimately make a better made dough. Five seconds left. I've got just under 20 degrees Celsius, so this dough is sitting perfect. The machine stopped all by itself, and it's telling me on the display, go ahead and add the oil, so let's do that. I'm gonna lift this up. I've got my oil right here. This is 50 grams of olive oil for every liter of water. Now, this, uh, this is a, a technique that we don't generally do in the professional world by adding all the ingredients at one time like this. But in this case, to be able to show any operator watching this how simple it is that now we've eliminated a lot of the extra thinking by our employee that the machine's going to do this automatically, the dough now is beginning to absorb that oil. And as the oil starts to absorb that uh, into that dough, you're going to get a dough now that's going to start to look very open, almost taffy-like. I've got this set at two minutes. On the, on the 200 revolutions per minute. And this is because, again, I want to give this enough time to work the oil into the dough, but I also want to give it uh, just enough um, stress to, to actually create now this homogenous, beautiful, smooth dough as well. This is that part of the dough when everybody starts to see it, says, wow, I can't believe this looks so creamy. It looks like taffy. You're able to actually pull it at this stage and you might even begin to start hearing popping. That popping is now the gluten net being fully developed and what's happening is those air bubbles are getting compressed inside and you're gonna be almost like pressing down on bubble wrap. It's gonna make those little pops every time that gas compresses in here. The dough is coming together and I can actually see that that core of the stage, the dough is coming to the middle of the bowl. I'm starting to hear little noises and little pops. So again, this dough is doing what we needed to do all automatically. My dough temperature, we've still just surpassed 20 degrees Celsius. So we're well within that range of what our optimal final desired dough temperature should be. Everything is happening automatically. 14 seconds left, and this dough now is already starting to look like taffy. Very smooth, very open. How beautiful and perfect. The last step is gonna to be to go ahead and add our salt. And again, because of the amount of water that's inside over here, this machine is gonna do everything else automatically. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add my salt, just like this right on top. This is fine sea salt, 50 grams of sea salt per liter of water. Press start. And now the machine has increased to 250 revolutions per minute. So this is that last two minutes that I'm really gonna focus on not only 
putting this uh, salt inside of the dough, but I'm also gonna focus on putting all of that air inside of this dough. What's gonna happen is all these beautiful air bubbles are gonna be created, and then when you go and make your dough and you press it out on the second day when you're ready to do your baking, you're gonna have a much open, much more open cell structure because those air bubbles are in here from mixing and then the rest is there from the actual work of the yeast and the oven spring that happens from your oven. This dough is looking beautiful. I've got a minute and 11 seconds left and this dough is gonna be completed exactly on time, right on point. I've just gone into 21 degrees Celsius which is the perfect temperature for this dough. Again, I put this at the high side as a safety that I know I never want to go over 25 degrees Celsius. Keeping in mind my optimal desired temperature is 20 to 25, and right now I'm sitting at 21. This is fantastic. You can hear that slapping, that popping that's happening. The dough is telling us that it's, it's almost done. The bottom of this bowl, the sides of the bowl are completely clean. This is a testament to why this machine is state of the art. I've used a lot of machines throughout my career and by far, this is the best one I've ever worked with. We've got 15 seconds left. The dough has begun to cork to the point where the, the dough is starting to close. This looks very puffy and airy. This dough is completed. The only thing left to do at the end now is to give this dough a 15 minute rest before we divide into our dough balls. I'm gonna lift this up over here. I'm gonna turn on this light and I'm gonna grab a little bit of dough and I'm gonna show you this dough. This dough now is at the right point. I know it's at the right point when we do what's called a window pane test. A window pane test is when the gluten has uh, formed enough to actually have enough structure that we can open up this dough and it won't rip. I should be able to bang on this like a drum. Look how beautiful this is. This dough has come together very smoothly. And again, all I have left to do now is just pull this dough out of the mixer. I'm gonna cut this with my fingers. I never wanna pull this dough all out in one big solid piece. I'm gonna cut this with my fingers to separate it out. And then all I have to do is just physically take this, look at how beautiful this dough is. Completely mixed, properly mixed. I'm gonna put this right here so you guys can see this. This machine, because it's got two separate motors, this machine gives us the ability that now I can turn the bowl, bringing the dough towards me, and then all I'm doing is just folding it on top of itself, pick up any little loose pieces that might be attached, and there we go. We took our dough up, one shot. There's no need for a liftable head. There's no need for a removable bowl. We did this all by ourselves. So guys, on behalf of me, Leo Spaziri, all of us at the North American Pizza and Culinary Academy, and on behalf of all my friends over at Sunmix USA, I wanna thank you all for watching us, and I hope to see you in class very soon. Ciao.